Now, we have a small bit of good news uh, in a world gone mad. This time last year, almost to the day actually, food writers uh, Carl and Gina Daly, you remember the Daily Dish and Mr. Dish, and they were sitting in front of me here and they spoke to me then about their then recent miscarriage, about their heartbreak and how it was particularly hard because of the COVID restrictions. And today, one year on, they're on the line to tell me about their new baby boy, Gene. Hi guys, congratulations. Hey, Brendan, thank you very much. So, Hi, Gina, thank you. Hi, Carl. Gina, when was Jean born? Um, he was born on the 29th of November. OK, and he's home now and everything. And is he a good baby? He's home, he's safe, he's healthy and he's such a good baby. He sleeps all day. <laughs> We're blessed. Fantastic. <laughs> you know, there's two types of babies and that's the kind you want. Anything else you can deal with if he sleeps. Um, so, Carl, were you able to be there for appointments and the birth and everything at this stage? Not really. It was kind of a case of sitting in the car park in Mullingar Hospital, kind of tentatively watching my phone. Um, I got to go in for two scans in the hospital, but because of everything that happened last year, I'll never forget when Gina told me she was having a miscarriage. It was by text because I couldn't go in with her, and it was just devastating to, to have that news and not be able to comfort her. So everything with this pregnancy, it was so I was so nervous and not being able to, to be there was quite difficult. I, I completely understand why I wasn't able to be there. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was difficult not to be there. Yeah. No, Gina, you introduced Jean on uh, Instagram by saying he was born with Down syndrome, which means he has an extra chromosome of awesomeness. Yeah, absolutely. He is uh, my little rainbow with an extra colour. He is... Um, he was... Uh, we don't have an official diagnosis. Obviously, that has to be done through genetics. Yeah. Um, and we didn't know throughout the pregnancy. Um, so when did you find had, out? Um, when they handed them to me. <laughs> did they tell you or? Uh, no, I told them. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I had, I was uh, booked for a, a C-section uh, last Monday and I went into full blown labour on the Sunday night. So they had to give me an emergency C-section and um, I was already in the hospital because I had pains through the day and Carl was sent home and he, um, got a call to say, come in quick. And he was at the door getting scrubs on when baby Jean was born. Um, but he, he just missed it by t- five minutes. Um, but I just said, look, it, it is what it is. The baby, once he's healthy, I don't care. I would yeah. have had him in a field <coughs> if I had to. <laughs> um, and he is But when they, hand, they, they lift him up over the sheet and yeah. I knew straight away when I saw him and it, was, uh, it wasn't a moment of sadness or anything. Like it was a moment of pure and utter love and joy because it was just, oh, he was just the most beautiful baby I've ever seen. Yeah, I bet he was. And you, you had no idea before that nothing showed up on scans or anything? There was a slight indication at my 20 week scan um, they had said his femur length was a little bit short. Um, so we had a repeat scan. They had advised me to get testing done in Hollow Street. But the day before I was due to go for um, a full anomaly in Hollow Street, I had a scan in Mullingar and his leg they had a growth spurt and they were like, no, everything, they checked the back of the neck, they checked the nose, they checked the usual kind of markers. And they said, look, nothing else is showing up. So, you know, we're pretty sure he'll be okay. But, you know, it's your your choice what you want to do. And I just said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for this baby for a long time and it doesn't matter. What, what what diagnosis there is, he'll be loved and he'll be mine. And that's the most important thing. So, yeah. Carl, did you get a bit of a shock or were you all right? Um, I, I guess it's it's something I, I didn't know anything about. Um, but yeah. no, that, like when, when he was handed to me, I just asked, is he healthy? Is he OK? And what happens is, obviously, after the cesarean, Gina is brought into recovery. So I was brought upstairs to a room with him. And the paediatrician came in and examined him and said, his heart sounds great, everything else sounds good. And that's all that matters. He, yeah. like as, as Gina said, he's the best little boy and he's brought so much love into this house. I can't even begin to tell you the, the warmth and happiness that the little fella has brought and he's so good and even just sitting down with his little kind of face looking up at you and smiling and kind of you know it's just it's beyond I'll beyond stop. that I could have ever imagined and I, I'm, I don't <laughs> think any of us have ever been this happy I'll stop and, and, but listen Carl the dads in these situations do sometimes go into project management mode have, have you gone on the internet and made yourself an expert now in everything to do with Down Syndrome 
I'm, I'm kind of taking it slowly. I yeah. didn't want to kind of just overload. And actually, a friend of mine reached out to me, someone I hadn't spoken to in a while, and, and he has a, a daughter, um, he's Down syndrome, so he's kind of said, look, give me a call in a week or two when, when things are kind of yeah. quietened down and we'll have a good chat. And to me, I think that's that's great, having someone who's been there and experienced yeah. it and got... And it, it's obviously... it's it's. It's not a negative thing, it's a, it's a positive thing. And as, as we said, like, you've got an extra chromosome of awesomeness and it's just a case of, like, what do we need to do to be the best parents for him and how can we yeah. make sure that we do everything right for him? Yeah, and look, if he's healthy for now, sure, there's plenty of time to find out everything you need to find out. Would, would, Gina, were you well looked after then? Were, were you bombarded with information and kind of all that kind of stuff or did they, did they handle it well? Um, yeah, I mean, the because... His obviously wait. The, the, it was. It's just a query at the moment, and and okay. the doctors were like, "Look, we can't officially give you. We I can tell you now, he has Down syndrome, but yeah. you know which type it is, and and so on and so forth. But one one thing I will say is the the nurses and the doctors and the pediatricians and everything. They I was on my own in a private room. Um, they. They were constantly there. They were constantly seeing if I was okay, checking the baby and information was given to me. They were like, look, you don't need to read this now, but I'm sure, you know, the internet is at your fingertips, but here's what we have. And so many of them with experiences of mammies who have been in prior to me and, you know, what what maybe some women might find it difficult to accept at the start um, and you know, yeah. you know, it's it's one of those things where you really, if if you're if you're not expecting it, you, you don't know which way you're going to go. But yeah. for me, it was such <laughs> positive, and it was a Great. really lovely experience. Yeah. Right. And and when did Ben and Holly get to meet Jean then? And um, I brought him home on uh, last Friday. So um, my dad lives with us as well. So it was a surprise. We didn't tell them we were coming home, <laughs> and it was just such a lovely, a lovely, lovely surprise. My dad nearly collapsed. <laughs> 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 He said, if you don't have this baby soon, I'm going to have it. <laughs> but um, I know the kids just, they're absolutely mad about him. Everybody is mad about him. He's just, he's just brilliant. Oh, fantastic. And Carl, I noticed from the pictures that you have a tattoo with Jean's hand on your name already. Fair play, <laughs> like you have your priorities right. You went off and carved out some time for a tat. I, know, I, I was booked in with a friend of mine and I kind of had it in the back of my mind. I was going to get him to do that as well. As I was getting something else done, but I okay. wanted to just, it, it, he's as as you know, like with everything that happened last year, and it's it's been such a it's whirlwind. It, he's been like the, the most anticipated little baby for us, and it's just the most special thing. And I wanted to mark it um, with his name, like and so yeah. <laughs> Okay, listen, that's that's an amazing, lovely Christmas story and, and, and a bit of good news. So, come here, um, are you doing Christmas at your house now? Christmas dinner in the air fryer and all that kind of thing? Or how will you do Christmas? <laughs> I think I'm cooking this Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> we, we might get my dad to do it. Yeah. <laughs> sure have beans and toast. <laughs> okay, and you're working away on a new book as well, I gather? We are, yeah. It's... Um it's kind of, we're getting there at the moment, yeah, so it's, it's due out a bit later next year. We haven't kind of officially announced that yet, but yeah, we're working away and we've got some new exciting bits and pieces and a couple of things differently than the last one as well, just to just to kind of spice it up a little bit. Okay, well, listen, uh, yeah, life goes on. Well, listen, that's fantastic news and congratulations to both of you. Absolutely uh, wonderful and great to talk to you and hear that great buzz off you and everything. Uh, thanks Thank so a million. Much. Okay, and, and by the way, you can, we'll keep you an eye to business here. You can follow Jean and Carl on Instagram <laughs> at, at The Daily Dish and at Mr. Dish. Jean and Carl, thanks very much for your time Thank you, today. Brendan. Thanks a million, Brendan. Bye, Gina. Bye-bye. Happy Christmas. Well done, guys. And, and you too. Bye bye.